been a long time coming before you got the shot in the UFC, you're in, you got the win, and pretty spectacular one at that. I mean, tell us how you're feeling, you know, the overriding emotion. Yeah, I mean, I thought with all the um, excitement for it, well, you know, it's, it's obviously a big deal to me, it's been a long time coming, I've not even thought for 16 months. So to come out to the UFC now and fight after 16 months and put on my first TPO, put on a performance for the fans, it was nice because usually, you know, obviously they see me wrestling, they see me getting submissions. But you know, to um, to come out and get a TKO on a, on, a, on a good fighter who's in a two-fight winning streak in the FC, I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy with that that performance. You were hurt at one point, and can you talk us through that? How bad you were you? Well, everyone said I was hurt. I mean, now you say it, I must have been, you know. But I, the way I felt in the fight was the felt that like I kind of missed my own shot and fell. But obviously, you've all said it. You've all seen it from the outside. I'm in there and I'm dealing with a lot of emotion, so it must be what happened. I'll have to watch it back, but. Yeah, I felt, I felt fine. I, obviously, I got straight back up and, you know, the grander that I am, the wrestler that I am and the place where I come from, Team Carbon, and that, it's always tough. I was going to come back. That must be satisfying you with the that Yeah, I, well, I know I'm fit. You know, I mean, I know the training I do is, 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 is good and I know it's hard and the fitter you are, they, they reckon the quicker you recover and, you know, it felt like it was just a, maybe a flash knockdown then, but... Do you think that's a real statement as well, a guy like Nadan Armani as well, to, to get a W over him as a very, very tough fighter, everyone knows what he brings to the cage? Yeah, Nad, Nad's a tough fighter. Nad's never been finished, I don't think, if, if I remember rightly. I don't think he's been finished, but yeah, Nad's um, in a two-fight winning streak in the UFC, and, and I've just beat him on my debut after not fighting for 16 months, so I think that's uh, you know, part, of my, my, part of my back myself, I'd say. How was the run-up to this fight? Because obviously, Darren Till was campaigning for so long to get you into the UFC. Did you feel any pressure, or did you enjoy this moment? Um, you know, with so many people knowing your name because of Darren Till. I enjoyed the moment. You know, the support's been fantastic from everywhere. Uh, I've not really had anyone say anything bad about me. I've not really had any messages saying any bad. You know, I've not got any haters just yet. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll get some, but you've got to have some haters, haven't you? But I haven't got, I haven't had any. And, um, you know, I'm grateful for that. And I didn't, I didn't, I dealt with all the pressure well, I felt. You've competed all over the world, and you've competed in a variety of disciplines, but the feeling of walking out into the UFC off and on in London on flight night, is it comparable to any of the other things you've done, or is this going to stay with you? This is the, this is the biggest thing I have done. But, you know, I've obviously done things that kind of lead up to this to help me get this experience. And obviously I've walked out into um, Champion Fit Fights with Darren Till, and I've always talked about with Stephen for, you know, what would I, how would I feel if this was me, when there's thousands of fans screaming for him and stuff. I felt, how would I feel? And you know what? I felt comfortable. I felt like I belong here, and I think I proved I belong here. The performance for sure showed it, uh, a guy with absolutely no octagon jitters and nerves. You looked like you you looked at home in the cage. Yeah. Is that how it felt? Yeah, well, I think octagon jitters are just a mindset, and I know I've got a more strong mindset, so I know I can walk out there and perform. Given that it was your debut, and, you know, you want to impress, you want to make a statement on your debut, when you rocked Naramani, and one of the things that impressed us in the room when we were watching the fight back was, the fact that you didn't just go crazy and dive straight in when you saw that he was rocked, you sort of kept your distance and picked your shots really well. Talk to us about your mindset when you realised that you had Nad, Nad rocked and how you went about sort of actually piecing the strikes together and getting him finished. Yeah, I, I've always, I suppose I've always visioned it, how would I do, what would I do if um, this was happening? And um, I always knew I'd stay relaxed and, and stay composed and finish the fight. But I know a lot of people um, have said, why did I not push the takedown more? Because I didn't, I didn't even in the first round, it was just towards the end of the sec first round that I, I pushed the takedown. But, um, you know, I mean, truth is, is, is I, 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 tore my, I tore my hamstring two weeks ago, a grade two to, um, hamstring tear, and I was never going to pull out this fight. So, the thing that did my hamstring was, a, was, a wrestle, was, was, when, was when I was wrestling. So, after that first takedown, I felt my hamstring. So that's why I probably stood up a little bit more as well. So I was a little bit hesitant with my takedown. So I've not even had to, a chance to throw my true wrestling tonight. I got one takedown, but I've not had the chance to show my true wrestling, and there's a lot more to come with that. British wrestlers, so British fighters, have got a reputation overseas as Brits can't wrestle. You're, you're the sort of shining. Example. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's why I'm here because I'm going to show that, that we can wrestle and I can wrestle, and I, I can I can compete with these American guys who's at the top, and that's what I want. What would you like? You know, I'm gonna. I've, I've got married a few weeks ago, so I'm gonna go on um, having my honeymoon. Set my wife on her honeymoon, I think she deserves it. She's put up with me a long time now. So I'm going to go and enjoy that, but I'm a kind of guy who's going to, who's going to have a quick turnaround and I'll fight whenever. And, um, you know, if the UFC call and say there's, there's a kind of 
polite in a few weeks and our oh, European show local. I'm ready for it and that's the way I am. Do you have any minds? Uh, any, do you have any names in mind? No, no names in mind just yet. I've got to probably um, tally up some wins and then I can maybe start calling these top guys out. But one of my goals is, you know, to get to the top ten as quick as I possibly can. Hopefully this year, early next year, that I want to be in the top ten. But your teammate there, speaking of, you know, your teammate Darren has made that run pretty quickly. Are you going to try and kind of follow the, those shoes, get those big fights in quick so that you're challenging for a title within 12 months? Of course, yeah, yeah. I want to be, um, I want to be getting to them top guys as quick as I can. You know, like I said, I'll fight anyone. Being in the UFC is one thing, but I think I feel you get in the UFC, you've got to be prepared to fight anyone. So if they'll tell me to fight, you know, whoever in the next shot, I'll fight, you know, and that's the kind of guy I am. Are you going to be in Darren's corner? For the I moment? am. I am going to do Darren's corner later on. So I'm going to go and chill out now. I'll go get in that green room, hopefully some good food in that green room, and then I'll, um, I'll, I'll be out with Darren later. Have you, have you met with Darren since your fight? Since my fight, no. He's obviously just going to be Colin my coach has gone straight back for him. He's going to come back soon. But I seen him just before my fight. And, you know, he's in good spirits and he's he's looking well. But I started the show and I feel it was a good performance. He's going to finish it. You come from a very well developed, regulated sport in uh, wrestling. How much further do you think MMA can go in the UK specifically with better regulation and more development? Yeah, I feel it can go a long way. And like I've got kids at my club. Uh, who are doing MMA, they're doing wrestling, jiu-jitsu, they're doing everything. And they're coming through now from like 10 year old, so the young age. And, you know, it's going to develop very quick, I think. I think there's some of these young ones that's coming through are going to be unreal. So I think, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, lot of room for improvement. Are there specifics that you think are required in terms of like government input and government recognition and how much that could help the sport? Obviously, you know, the real set, especially for younger ones doing it, there's got to be, got to be monitored, you know, it's got to be body shots and stuff. but. Yeah, I think a governing body in, in the sport would be nice to have.